All right, welcome to this first episode from Menu 2C. And in this episode, we're going to learn the basics about proteins, specifically, what is the monomer of a protein, and then how is that monomer hooked together through dehydration synthesis, and how do we disconnect the dimers and the polymers through hydrolysis. So let's start off with what are proteins. Proteins are one of the four biomolecules. Remember, those are carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. And those last two, proteins and nucleic acids, you can argue that those two are the most important, and you can make a very valid argument that proteins themselves are the most important. Because everything that occurs in your body is done through Facts. chemistry, and that chemistry is controlled mainly through proteins in the form of an enzyme. And we're going to learn about that in a different episode. Proteins typically end in the suffix IN. Facts. Think of insulin, hemoglobin, adrenaline. Uh, those are some of the proteins that you find in your body, and you'll notice they end in an IN. So the word protein itself ends in an IN, and then therefore the name of most proteins are also going to end in an IN. Now, the monomer of a protein is a molecule called an amino acid. Remember, anything that is a molecule is going to be held together by covalent bonds. And an amino acid actually has five parts. In the center is going to be an alpha carbon. And that's just a carbon molecule. And remember, carbon can form four covalent bonds at once, so the other four things are going to be attached to that alpha carbon. Now, the name amino acid tells you what two of the functional groups are. So, the first functional group would be the amino group, and I typically draw that on the left-hand side, as you can see in the picture down there in, in, the, in the corner, is an amino group, and that is an NH2. And remember, an amino group behaves like a base. So, that side of the molecule has, is going to be basic. On the other side, the right-hand side where I typically draw this, is the carboxyl group. And remember the carboxyl functional group acts as an acid. So that's where the name amino or acid comes from amino acid. So if you think of what its name is, amino acid, you draw the amino group to the left and then the acid group to the right. So that carboxyl side of the molecule is going to behave like an acid. So one side of the molecule is a base, the other side is an acid, Therefore, these things are natural buffers. They're going to may help maintain a constant pH. So proteins uh, have a very important function in the homeostasis inside your body. Now, on top of the alpha carbon is just going to be a hydrogen, kind of a, just a boring hydrogen. And then below the alpha carbon is going to be the R group, sometimes referred to as a side chain. Now, there are 20 different amino acids in the world. Therefore, there are 20 different R groups. The alpha carbon, the amino group, the carboxyl group, and the hydrogen, those are found in every single amino acid. But the R group can vary, and it varies 20 different ways. Now, in the future, you may take a biochemistry or a class, or you'll take AP Biology, and you're going to learn the names of the different amino acids and what some, are, some of their properties are, or the other different R groups. But for this Bio 1 class, that's not going to be... Uh, that's not part of our focus. You'll pick those up. All right. This picture down here and below that you uh, you see here in the right hand corner, this is very important. You will have to draw this on a test or a quiz, so make sure you got this memorized. Now remember, alpha carbon in the middle. You put a hydrogen on top, and then I want you to think of the name amino acid. So to the left, draw an amino group NH2, and to the right, draw a carboxyl group because that's an acid group. And then down below, you're going to have the R group. Okay, That is the basic formula and basic structure for any amino acid. Now, we can hook together these monomers or amino acids together to make dimers and polymers. Now, we don't use the word mer in any of these, so we're going to use the word peptide because that refers to the bond that joins one amino acid with another. So when I hook two amino acids together, that's going to be a dipeptide. So that's the dimer. There's no such thing as a trimer. We have polymers, so that's three or more monomers hooked together. So if I hook three or more amino acids together, that's going to create a polymer. Now, proteins are just like any other uh, biomolecule that uses monomers. You can hook the two monomers together to make a dimer. Uh, you can take a dimer and add another monomer together to make a polymer.
And you're going to do that through a process called dehydration synthesis. And if you want to break the monomers off of polymers and dimers, you'll do the reverse reaction called hydrolysis that you learned about when we studied uh, carbohydrates and lipids. Now, in proteins, the dimer is called a dipeptide because that refers to the bond that holds the amino acids together. And then the polymer is called a polysaccharide, which is also held together by uh, a, a peptide bond. Now, just like you did in the other types of biomolecules that you learned about, you will use the functional groups to take away the water to bond these together. So if you look in this diagram to the right, you'll see we're going to use the carboxyl group from one amino acid and we're going to use the amino group from another. So if you remember dehydration synthesis, taking water out to make something, we will remove a hydrogen from the amino group and we're going to remove a hydroxide group or an OH from the carboxyl and that's going to give us our H2O. If you look here in this diagram, there's an H, and there's an OH, so there's your H2O, you took it out, there's your water, and then you're going to be able to form a hydrogen bond, or I'm sorry, a peptide bond right here. As you can see here, I took out the water and I was able to join these two guys together, and there's your peptide bond. You can always find a peptide bond by looking for a carbon with a double bonded oxygen bonded to a nitrogen that has a single hydrogen on it. That is your peptide bond. So going in this direction is dehydration synthesis. If we go in the reverse direction, that will be hydrolysis. Now remember, when we're going in this direction, in other words, dehydration synthesis, this is an anabolic process. We have built something. So in other words, we took two monomers, made a dimer, and this peptide bond represents stored energy. If we do the reverse, which is hydrolysis, this bond will be broken, energy will be released, the water will be replaced, and we've done the catabolic reaction because we took something and we broke it into different pieces. All right. Hopefully this dehydration synthesis and hydrolysis is getting easier because this is the third, maybe fourth time that you've seen it. All right. In future episodes in this series, we're going to learn about the functions of a protein. And then in the last episode, we're going to learn about the structure and function of nucleic acid. So, until the next time, we're going to catch you on the flip side.